the sculpture that all may have life evolved over time. Initially, the idea was to do two sculptures that would be placed on either side of the garden, uh, where these sculptures would then be facing each other and communicating with each other. After I came up with some initial sketches for that concept, we decided to do something a little bit different that would allow us to tell a story rather than just have two separate images, but to have what, what one might call a, a continuous narrative. So in order to do that, we chose to do a ball relief. The idea was to do a relief which would allow us to treat it more as a picture as opposed to two separate standing elements in the garden. A kind of sculpture called bas relief is unique. It offers possibilities different from freestanding statues. I find bas relief particularly interesting because with a limited amount of space, my goal was to try to, to represent it as, as much depth as possible. So in the finished piece, from the high point to the low point, there's 14 inches. But the way the piece reads, I believe it, it renders a, a, an even greater sense of depth. The more overlaps you have, the more potential you have of creating depth in the piece. So just in terms of, of overlap, we have one in front of, of him, him in front of her, her in front of him, he in front of the architecture, this part of the architecture in front of this, in front of this, the sky. So I don't know, depending on how one counts and goes through the various planes, or I think they're up to like eight or nine planes of, of depth. The composition of the piece took some time to think through. I knew that I want these two figures to be relating to each other somehow, but not just the two of them. There had to be other elements in the composition. In addition to the two central figures of Father Gayak and Mother St. John, there's a, a woman and a child. And the woman represents uh, the prostitutes and unmarried women that Father Gayak was helping. The boy represents uh, and the orphans that Father Gayak was helping by building an orphanage. The sheep are brought into the composition to make it more than just about these figures. The sheep also give it more of a pastoral feeling, more reminiscent of that part of France. The grapevines are also indicative of that part of France. And in fact, Mother St. John's husband and family made its fortune as wine producers. And of course, both the vines and the wheat are symbolic of the sacrament of the Eucharist. At a certain point, what I started to see compositionally were the four vertical elements. And then there's a large sort of ellipse or oval that encircles the four vertical elements. So in a way, they're kind of focused inside of, like a basket of some kind. So there's a, a certain um, sense of being protected. There's a real basket in the piece as well, containing books inscribed with the Latin motto that all may have life. Emphasizing the idea that what Father Gayak and Mare St. John would establish was meant to feed the mind or soul as well as the body. So those were the main um, compositional elements that kind of guided me throughout the piece in, ter in terms of the composition. So here my, my idea was to have Father Gayak coming with the people who needed help to Mother St. John who receives them. And there's a certain gesture of him to her and then her down towards her and also to him as if to say, I'm, I'm, I'm receiving you and I see that you, need, you are the ones who need my help. And she's reaching out with the gesture of protection, of welcoming. I connected the high part of the relief and the low part of the relief, the cross and, and the sheep as a symbol of Christ and of the Good Shepherd and innocence. What I've come to realize the more figurative work that I do is um, the importance of hands and faces. Ultimately, as an artist, what concerns me the most is the composition. I want to make something that is interesting to look at, that captivates you somehow and makes you want to spend a little bit of time with it, even regardless of the significance of the piece or the symbolism of the piece. But I've also realized that what's really important are the elements that people really identify with, and that is the hands and the faces. The idea of all the hands being displayed in the piece. I could have easily disguised some of the hands, like maybe having a hand on the back of one of the figures, I chose to have all the hands present in the composition. The piece was made here at LMU, where I teach, with the assistance of students who actually participated in the, in the process from the beginning of uh, the conceptualization period all the way through to installation. The whole process was about four years in the making, and nine months of that uh, part of the process was the actual making and sculpting of the clay piece. The piece was unveiled 
on November 13, 2010, on the anniversary of the birth of Father Gayak, in a ceremony attended by the President of the University, David W. Bircham, the Provincial Superior of the Western Province, Mary Janino, RSHM, and members of the LMU community and its extended family.